we may identify two main different positions with respect to the end of application of the law of non-international armed conflict. The first position holds that the relevant threshold for the end of a non-international armed conflict is the same as for international armed conflict, the general clause of military operations between the belligerents. This threshold will mean that the end of an armed conflict is far removed in time. It has the advantage of increasing the probability that all hostilities will not resume in the near future and reduces the risk of a revolving door classification which might lead to legal uncertainty. Moreover, the end of a non-international armed conflict would only depend on the occurrence of a factual and objective situation. Such a view is claimed to be supported by the ICTY when it asserted that IHL applies in the case of internal conflict until a peaceful settlement is achieved. However, non-international armed conflicts are not international armed conflicts. It is possible that a non-international armed conflict has ended even if there, is, there are still minor sporadic acts of violence. Indeed, the basic requirements for a non-international armed conflict to exist relate to the intensity of the violence and the degree of organization of the parties of the conflict, especially of the non-state actors. So another view on the end of application of the law of non-international armed conflict is to argue that logically a non-international armed conflict could end even if there is no general clause of the hostilities provided that the intensity of the hostilities or the organization of the non-state actor factually eroded to such extent that the requirements for the existence of a non-international armed conflict are not longer met. According to that other view, in order to avoid the problem of the revolving door classification and the ensuing legal uncertainty, the two, or one of the two, basic requirements of a non-international armed conflict should no longer be met with a certain degree of permanence or stability. Naturally, this order view is not without its critiques. The resumption of a non-international armed conflict is more likely to occur when hostilities are not completely closed even if they decrease, or when armed groups are not longer organized, but hostilities still occur at a high level. In many situations of non-international armed conflicts, violence has diminished for a time before increasing soon after, and when armed groups reorganized after a short time of disorganization. In addition, according to that position, the end of a non-international conflict is not dependent upon the occurrence of a specific factual situation, such as the general clause of military operations. What appears crucial is therefore the permanent character of the erosion of the two basic requirements for a non-international conflict. The assessment of such a character seems to be a much more subjective process than the assessment of the occurrence of a specific factual situation. However, that difficulty may be overcome, or at least partly overcome, by identifying key facts on the basis of which the degree of permanence or stability of the cessation of the conflict may be assessed. This is what the RCRC proposed in its 2016 commentary of Article 3 of the first Geneva Convention by mentioning facts such as the effective implementation of a peace agreement or ceasefire, declarations by the parties not contradicted by the facts on the ground, that they definitely renounce all violence, dismantling of government special units created for the conflict, the implementation of disarmament, 
the mobilization and or reintegration programs, the increasing duration of the period without hostilities and the lifting of a state of emergency or other restrictive measures. It is also interesting to note that according to the RCRC, IHL would still apply even after those hostilities have ended, if the cessation resulted from the decision of one party to suspend temporarily its participation to the conflict. Such a list of facts has the advantage of giving objective guidelines for the evaluation of the definitive end of a non-international conflict, while avoiding the pitfalls of the use of the general clause of military operations test 